Welcome back, everybody. Another candidate drops out of the Republican presidential race, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. The votes weren't there. The support wasn't there. Suspending his campaign following Tim Scott of South Carolina, who did so a couple of weeks ago. Chris Christie is not even considering that. Thank you. He is the former New Jersey governor and very much a 2024 presidential candidate. Good to see you, Governor. Good to be here, Neil. Um, first off, uh, the Burgum news. What did you make of it? Well, look, I, I like Doug a lot. We, we served together as governors um, during my time uh, at the beginning of his first term. Um, he's a really talented guy, and I thought he brought a lot to the discussion um, in the first couple of debates, especially on the energy issue and others where he's really expert. So I, I have great admiration for Doug. I have great admiration for his wife. She does extraordinary things on an issue that I really care about, as you know, on drug addiction. Right, right. And she has been way out front on that and doing great things. So I hope that they continue to stay involved. I, I was there eight years ago when you have to make a decision to drop out, and it's always hard. So, you know, I send my best to both of them. I'll call Doug later on um, and, and wish him my best. That He's a good friend well, and a good guy. Well, that could sprinkle to you. Sure could. Yeah. We're certainly going to pitch for it. Um, but that's how it goes, right? When these guys drop out, there's the, the, that, that, then who are the survivors? <laughs> picks up that support. That's right. And I think and I think the other thing that happens too is like you got to make sure those people don't decide just to stay home. Cuz this is really important for us. We've got to beat Joe Biden. And we need to keep everybody who has, was interested in the primary by supporting one candidate or another, keep them in the tent. Yeah. Keep them working for our cause because the cause ultimately is to beat Joe Biden and to win the White House back. And so you, you don't want people just to fade away. So I'm going to actively go after those supporters and let them know that they have a home with us for a governor who put forward conservative policies, got things done, and will know how to get things done in Washington. You know, um much is said of, of, of people who are, are, have benefited from challenging Trump. Of course, you are the strongest. Nikki Haley, maybe a little less so. Uh, Ron DeSantis has been a little bit more coy when it comes to that. So is there a, an opening, a light at the end of the tunnel for candidates who risk ticking off that base? I think there absolutely is, Neil, and, and because it's the truth. I mean, look, I'm not saying these things about Donald Trump to be mean or angry or anything else. But I'm maybe saying, a little bit you are. No, 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 no. I mean, well, just no more than my, new, my oh. usual New Jersey style, Neil. I'm to clarify. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. But, you know, the fact is that I'm saying it because of the truth. And I think there is a market for the truth in our party. I think there's a small... But a lot of them don't like to hear it, right, Governor? Now, in Florida, you did something I've rarely seen. They initially were booing you almost nonstop. You didn't leave the stage. You kept talking, and the booing started stopping, if I could say that. Yep. What, what do you learn from that? Keep going. Be patient and be persistent. Look, Donald Trump has dominated the Republican Party political world since June of 2015, and that's a long time. We're talking about eight and a half years now where he has been the main figure in our party. And he has disappointed a lot of people in our party with the things that he's done, how he's conducted himself personally. Not many of them say that out loud. Well, they don't. They whisper. And I tell a story about a woman in New Hampshire in a restaurant grabbing me by the arm and saying, please keep it up. Go after Trump. <laughs> and, and I said, I will. But why are you whispering? You know, and she said to me, because a lot of my friends don't like to hear me say that. Is that right? Yeah. What you had mentioned about Nikki Haley, when you're unwilling to stand up and talk about who the guy is, the front runner in the race, uh, by 30 points, depending on what poll you look at, you're not going to win. You're trying to come in second. Yeah. I, look, you can't beat the man without beating the man. I mean, that's it, Neil. You're not going to do it by hoping for something to happen. Look, I was in the race in 2016. None of us, me, Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, John Kasich, none of us took the Trump threat seriously. And we all thought, well, at some point he'll drop out or at some point yeah, he'll fade yeah. away. And we all waited. Hope is not a strategy. If you want to beat someone, you need to go out and tell people why he's not right for the job and why you are. And that's what our whole campaign has been about. Well, that's the line the others are dancing, right, Governor? You said you can't be running, talking about Nikki Haley, against Donald Trump and then say he was the right president for the right time. Uh, but I understand what you meant there, but weren't you saying the same back in 20? 16. Sure, we all were. So, so he back then was the right president, right? Oh, what she we said was correct. No, I, I turned out to be wrong. And I'm not saying I wanted Hillary Clinton to be president, right. but I had great hopes for Donald Trump's presidency. 
but we didn't repeal and replace Obamacare. We didn't build a wall on the southern border. We didn't balance the budget in four years. We added nearly $8 trillion in new debt um, to our country, to our children and our grandchildren. The, the Trump administration did not come anywhere near the expectations and the hopes we all had for it. And you can't look back on it now and say he was right for the right time. No. And by the way, he tr he's lied to us about, st about the election being stolen, and he tried to in inhibit our Constitution by making sure that he was not kicked out of office and that, in fact, um, Joe Biden was the one kept out of office. You know, Neil, you got to be for something in this country if you're going to run for public office. Let me tell you what I am for first and foremost. I'm a constitutionalist. I believe in the Constitution over men and women. But the Constitution says nothing about a convicted felon if it comes to that, because he's got 97 some odd chances to dodge that, but one of them might stick. Then what? What no. is the constitutionalist and you say it doesn't say anything about somebody? It, you know, Adams and Jefferson were relying upon um, the smartness of the American people. Not well, I to covered elect them, them when they were there. <laughs> I remember your your right. coverage was really really Thank good, you very much. especially that 1800 yeah. race. Yeah, and you, the powdered you, wig. I you had called it, Neil. Well, what do you make of that? That 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 it, that is a uh, that's that's a possibility. How about this? He's going to go on trial the day before Super Tuesday. I believe he's going to be convicted in that January 6th trial in Washington D.C. Predominantly because Mark Meadows, as you know, right. has signed an agreement. Former chief of staff. His former chief of staff, former one of the founders of the Freedom Caucus, is going to testify against him. Um, he's going to be convicted. Imagine this. If he's our nominee, he won't be able to vote for himself. But he can be president. Yes. Look. And, 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 and this is when I talk to other politicos that they're, they're not steeped in the battle like you are. But they say, look, if he, if he hasn't been dinged by all of these, you know, uh, indictments, a conviction isn't going to make a difference. You I think, think it, it might. I think a conviction is different for two reasons. One, because it won't be a, a, a liberal prosecutor talking about him anymore. It'll be his former chief of staff saying he, Mark Meadows, committed crimes because you wouldn't need immunity if you hadn't committed crimes, and that Donald Trump committed crimes on his watch. That's very different for conservative voters to hear that from Mark Meadows than to hear from Jack Smith. Secondly, this is a jury of your peers convicting you. Not, again, the two-tiered system of justice that a lot of people are concerned about. I think it will be very different. The question's going to be, is there going to be somebody who's willing to stand up to him until that moment so that it's not decided? And that's why I said recently, I'm in this through the convention. And I'm in it through but the convention. But his supporters, if they lose him for that very reason, they're not going to go flocking to you. They don't like you, right? Look, they, they, you, if you, it'd be hard to imagine, but they like Joe Biden less than they like me. You think so? I absolutely do. And yeah. they don't want Joe Biden. If he were the nominee, and you've been asked this many which ways, but you would not support him, right? But, would you just leave it blank? Or? No, my, look, what I've said and what I refused to raise my hand for on the stage in the first debate was if someone's a convicted felon. Look, Neil, if someone's convicted of felonies, I think we have to have a higher standard in our country than that. And the fact that he is susceptible to that should make all of us say, you know what? Thank you for your service, Mr. President. We need to move on. And that's why I'm in this race, because I don't want Joe Biden and so Kamala you, Harris to be in the office pressure. again. Yeah, well, Christy, you know, great job, rave campaign. You, you got to bow out to give Nikki a chance, to give DeSantis a chance, you say? As, as why shouldn't DeSantis bow out when he was in the mid-30s in these polls that everybody wants to be, you know, slave to? Yeah. Um, he was in the mid-30s back in the spring, and now he's in the single digits. Why shouldn't he be the one to drop out? I was at zero. I'm now at 14 in New Hampshire. We seem to be going in opposite There's directions. A, a Bulga poll that has you at six and a half percent. So you look like you have a very good shot at the debate on Wednesday, right? I will be there on Wednesday. Okay. You can count have, on Have they told you that? No, they don't tell anybody till oh. after 8 o'clock. Their rules are, and they've done this for each one of the debates, no one gets told who's invited until 8 p.m. two days before. So tonight at 8 p.m., invitations will be extended, and I am confident I'll be getting, as they would say in American Idol, the golden <laughs> ticket um, to head to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And I'll say this. Remember this about the polls. If polls were correct, Hillary Clinton would be in her second term. No, you're right. Right? I was on the, the, the exit polling calls that night in 2016 because I was chairman of the Trump transition. And they said that Hillary Clinton was going to get 360 electoral votes and Democrats were going to win the House and the Senate. By midnight, I was sitting in Donald Trump's apartment helping him write a, an acceptance speech to be elected president. I think everyone needs to take a breath. Remember this, too. I was watching some video over the weekend. At this time in 2011, Newt Gingrich was saying, look at the polls. 
I'm definitely going to win. At this time in 2015, Ben Carson was 17 points ahead of Ted Cruz in Iowa. Wow. No, you're right. I mean, history proves it's a lot that, of time. History is wrong. This is more personal, Governor, and I mean sure. no disrespect, but when I hear another candidate blast personal attack lines, like at you, with the overweight thing, um, when I hear Donald Trump say, don't call him a fat pig, he's not a fat pig, please do not call him a fat pig, and says in response to, uh, you know, a Christy question that is off bounds. Uh, don't call him a fat pig because it's extremely disrespectful. I actually went to the trouble, Governor, of counting up the number of times he has done this. It's in the dozens. Yeah. Now, as someone who I would say I'm, um, I don't like to use those terms. I calorically challenged. How, how do you deal with that? Because he's extended this obviously to Nikki Haley, calling her bird brain. Look, as far as I can't speak as to Nikki. But I, let me say this, Nikki Haley's not a bird brain, like, please. She's an intelligent woman. She's a really good two-term governor of South Carolina, and I like her personally. She's a good person, and she shouldn't be subjected to that, nor should anybody. But what does your family say about this? I mean, they hate it. Yeah. Sure. My children hate it, um, especially because we've been friends with Donald Trump for over 20 years. My children have socialized with him. They, he's known me since I became U.S. attorney in New Jersey in 2002. Um, we've been to his home a number of times. And, and so this kind of stuff, it just shows you, though, he's lost it, Neil. I mean, the fact of the matter is that he's so angry and so bitter and so self-consumed. But every time your name comes up, yeah. that's what he does. And I, policy and substance, that's yeah. all fair game, and you do that back and forth. But you've never gone back at him. No. Others have, I've had comedians here say, why doesn't Christie go after the hair? Why doesn't Christie? You don't do that. I'm wondering, do you feel you miss a chance, or did you see what Marco Ruby and some of the others did back in 2016 and realize it's a waste of time? Don't go there. Don't go on that level. You know, look, I can't ever guarantee you what I'll do if I'm face to face with him. Because, you know, you know this, Neil. Guys from New Jersey have been used to dealing with obnoxious guys from New York for a long time. So if we were one-on-one, -on -one, I don't know exactly what would happen. But what I want to do is spend my time telling people that you don't want a person like this in the White House. What young parent right now could point to that kind of stuff from Donald Trump and say to their kids, you want to be like the president? He's a role model. He's not. He's a role model for what not to be. And maybe but we need to get back to that guy who you argue is a role model is leading in one-on-one -on -one polls against the president. Now, you're quite right. All that changes. In ephemeral, I get that. But does that bug you? This same guy has been personally insulting you with these insults to Nikki Haley is the runaway leader for the Republican nomination. It, look, it, what it does for me is it motivates me. Is that like I know if I just get out there a little bit more, push a little bit more, talk a little bit more, argue a little bit more on the, on the merits that I can bring people around, because I do believe the American people don't like that stuff. I really do. I think they think that's unfair. And, and you know, at the end of the day, for him, and I have said this in return, like, you know, like, who's he, Hercules? I mean, I, you know, we've seen the pictures on the golf course. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not going to call him the same things, but we're not talking about an Adonis over here in Donald Trump. But you're thinking it. Uh, no, no, I don't right. think those horrible things, because guess what? And you, I know you and I agree on this, that to have people use that, it's, it is the one discrimination in this snowflake world we live in that's still allowed. Somehow you could talk about somebody's weight, and that somehow is fair game. But anything else yeah. is unfair and not fair game. I think the fact of the matter is he's an old-time guy in an old-time world, treating somebody who was very good to him and was a friend to him very unfairly. And I wouldn't say that stuff about him, even though um, I've seen the same pictures you've seen. And I, what I do is I let people draw their own conclusions on that, Neil. Because guess what? I don't think it's relevant. When I was in Hurricane Sandy, I was never heavier in my life, Neil, than I was at Hurricane Sandy. I am right now 90 pounds less than I was. Is that right? Yes, during Hurricane wow. Sandy. And I will tell you something. I never did a better job for the people in my state than I did during that period of time. So the whole thing is irrelevant to whether you're a good candidate or a bad candidate. I had a feeling you would say that, but good luck coming out of your shell. I'm going to try, Neil. It seems to be working. You know, if I could show a little personality, I yes. might have a future in this business. Okay, a little...
Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Chris Thanks for having me, Neil.